so excited. It's here, it's here. Dominic just dropped it off and it is 1.30 in the morning. It's taking everything in me right now to not start mocking this thing up in the stang. All right guys, welcome to today's video. As you see by the uh, title, it is pretty exciting times and I have to be fully transparent with you. Before we actually pull the engine in the Mustang, we kind of had a plan to do this. I kind of may have already had the engine on the way. But this GT350 right here is gonna be the proud home of a Barra. Alberto, you wanna give them a basic rundown real quick on what you know about this thing right here before I fill them in on the rest. All I know is inline six, and it makes like over a thousand horsepower very easily, and I'm pretty excited to build one of these. I never built one myself, never seen one in person myself. Pretty excited to be part of this project. So I actually reached out to you guys on Instagram, and you connected me with a guy by the name of Dominic from Dominator Motorsports, and he had a bunch of Barras in stock. So if you're not familiar with this, this is a four liter inline six made by Ford, sold in a lot of different cars in Australia. Uh, they like to refer to it as the Mighty Barra because with a few little internals in this thing, making a thousand horsepower is no sweat. Now they're big, they're heavy. I think they weigh somewhere around 500 pounds in its current state. It's about two inches taller than a Jay-Z, which we have over here for reference. Alberto, can I lift the cover or is this all secret? It's, it's still secret, it's very much oh. secret. Anyway, <laughs> it's about two inches taller. Because it's so tall and because it's so heavy, it's not super common for like drift car swaps. Uh, coincidentally, there is one car in Australia that I know of that is an S550 that's doing a bear swap, but it's a drift car. And what I want to do, what? How many videos behind is this going to be from now? Uh, I, I think we're like three videos behind, so this will be up in like three days. I don't know if I give me enough time to reveal that. I'm, you, no, Albert's like, Albert's like, I didn't want to edit tonight. I've been putting so much work into that thing. Like, I don't okay. want you to spoil it. Like, All right, that's fine. Yeah. That's fine. But anyway, um, there's one car that I know of in Australia that is an S550 with a Barra. It's a drift car. And uh, what I want to do with this a little bit different, I really thought it was cool how Trevor got that Jay-Z to work in the S550 with the cluster all working. I don't know if he had AC in it, but if we can make this like a street car with the Barra, have working AC, have the cluster, all the OEM functionalities work, it would basically be like a factory turbo inline six S550. So. It's obviously going to complicate things a little bit that we have no harness left and I'm still searching for a front clip or something that I can rob parts from. But what we're going to do today is kind of go over a little bit of what our plans are with this, mock it up in the engine bay, take some measurements. Alberto, do you, do you, do you, do you, burnt race car. do you not like, but it makes cars so much more enjoyable to drive. It doesn't make it enjoyable to work on them. Though. Yeah. Exactly. But look how big it is. Like the, the, for, okay, so my logic with it, I think I explained this to you guys already. It's such a capable chassis, you can put down so much power, it would be almost a joke to make anything less than a thousand. Maybe you gotta find a short. Let me find a short, Adam. Hold on, I, I was gonna diagnose the AC. Was it not kicking on? Hold on. I can't figure out. The wires are the same, Adam. <laughs> so, it was either do like, I thought an RB30 might be cool, but RBs are like super complicated and we've already done a bunch with it. And once I found a bear state side, it is so unbelievably simple. You know, getting some of the parts from Australia has proven to be a little bit complicated, but Dominator does have quite a bit in stock. Um, obviously, uh, we'll, we'll talk about this engine a little bit. So there's different generations. This is the FG. There's an importer in California that constantly posts these for sale. But as far as I know, all theirs are the BA ones. And it's really important to have the FG because what I understand, the head flows a bit better and it's rear sump which is what you need for most swaps. If it was front, it would basically not work with where this cross member is. So what we're about to do now and we're very excited to do is toss this thing in there and kind of see how it lies, take some measurements so we can figure out what we could do for exhaust manifold, what we could do for intake manifold, and then uh, kind of fill you guys from there on what the plans are and kind of what the rough timeline is looking like on this thing. I'm curious too, like I want to know what you guys think I should do with paint on this. I know I asked you in the last video, but what? It's a bit, uh, it's not gonna clear the sway bar. Well, we already know that. The thing is on this oil paint, it has this weird looking like fin thing. Would you say that is Alberto? Does that oil pick up tube area? There? No, 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 it's a shark fin. I know that oil pick up tube goes through there after seeing some illustration, so it's like weird. It's called the shark fin. Well, well, not a boat fin. Alberto, so you can use this for marine and put it in the front of the boat, and it's already like, like good. It'll just put a propeller and it'll just. 
Imagine. Imagine if Alberta was Australian. Imagine if he had an Australian accent and said, Alberta, do your best Australian accent for me when we work on the Barra. Hey, mate, imagine this had a propeller on it. You can actually, like, make the whole thing go. <laughs> Somehow his voice got higher pitch when he was talking in Australian. That's funny. Um, all right. I can't do the Josh thing. It's like... The who? Who? Imagine this thing had a propeller on it. It will go as fast as a turbo. <laughs> Oh, uh, what a wanker. All right, let's throw this thing in there. Hey, mate, will you guys dip the thing? Yeah, I got it, bro. I'm curious how it's going to work with the electric power steering stuff in the way as well. If it'll, like, kind of tuck behind it. It should. It'll go back more. It is crazy how far it's gonna sit back. Oh, didn't it? The sway bar already? Yeah. Yeah, we called that. It might actually tuck behind it though. We've got we have like yeah. a few inches back here, Alberta. It needs to go lower though. That's it like after we lower it can go yeah. back a little bit. Yeah, I'm not too worried about the pain in this. Uh, I don't think it's gonna work with the sway bar. Mm -hmm. Oh it's 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 laying on it. It's like a boat thing, under a boat, and you know how it's like pointing? <laughs> That's what I like. was saying, you put a propeller <laughs> on the back and it, and it just See, goes like a boat. <laughs> Alright, take two, no sway bar. Will it fit? It better fit. I mean, if it doesn't, we can always just you put this... Yeah, sure. Sounds good to me. <laughs> it's actually going to be tighter than I thought. The pan's actually hitting the cross member a little bit. So looking at the photos from the uh, S550 in Australia, I kind of neglected to realize that one's actually right hand drive, so the steering shaft is on the other side. And it looked like it had a uh, normal power steering rack, where this is the whole electric power steering that gets way more in the way with that fin thing. But I'm curious, we can rest the hood on it now, will it fit? Because it does have that little hump. I'm pretty sure it's in. Oh yeah, it's in. We could just try cutting it out. Yeah, it's still bulged like downwards. Yeah, it's hard to tell too if it's like what was caused by the fire or not. Is it hitting the rear or anything? But this, this still looks about the same, right? Yeah, it's just this part. We can cut it out real quick. I'm having second thoughts. I kind of want to know your opinion. Should we try to resurrect this chassis and try to save it and have it be the burned down GTD 50 that went bear swap? Or should we just kind of use this for mock-up and then get a like cleaner, maybe wrecked or blown up Mustang GT or something since 90% of the GT350 parts are going to come off it. Or we could just swap them from this one on another one. I don't know what to do. I say for starters, we just if we just trim like this section, I think that'll be enough. Will this cut? Yeah, it'll cut it. Oh my god! That's it nice. It cuts surprisingly easy. Yeah, worked better than my scissors back in preschool. <laughs> it's construction. It feels like cutting construction paper with regular scissors. For some reason, Alberto, I can't picture you as a child cutting construction paper. I, I feel like you. Like I feel like you were still building like K series when you were twelve. I was just signing them. Yeah, I never owned one. Of course, Alberta leaves the hard part for me. I was telling Adam, he has curve and elevation changes too. And he just died at the end. Look at that. Right at the finish no, line. That's great. <laughs> Look at this. Dude, it's so light. Feel it. Oh, this weighs nothing. It's like it's aluminum. So that's why it was so easy to cut. All right, round two, Alberto. Do it. What the hell is that? Alberto? Yeah, I don't know. Mm. It's on the close. left side. It's close though. Tell me should I cut the Round three. Yeah, the 
Alright, man. Alright, man. Alright, man. Alright, man. Alright, do you just crash something in the car? Yeah, it's cold. I don't know, probably like the side stuff. I still think it's the center support. Alright, now with the intake manifold off and the engine sitting a little bit lower, we could try for a third time to see if the hood will fit. What do you think, Alberto? I think it's our winner. We shall see. All the room in the world now. Look, look through there. Stick through this time. Look at that. It's wild without the manifolds. There's so much room for activity. If we wanted to put the biggest turbo imaginable, if we wanted to put three turbos in here, compared to most of the engine bays we're, we're used to working on, this is a lot of space. And then even on the intake manifold side too. It's sitting a little crooked now, but you get an idea. While Alberto begins disassembly of the Barra, me and Johan are tearing into this thing a little bit more and removing what we can and seeing what's salvageable. From here back looks like the only portion of the harness that might still be salvageable. I don't know about the wires running this way, but the fire did not get this side of the bay nearly as bad as this side. I'm afraid that we might actually end up having to do the splicing inside the cabin because it's so melted all in here. So I know this is something that I mentioned to you guys briefly the other day. I'm curious your input on it because me, Johan, and Alberto are all kind of like on the same page about it. Um, getting the harness and finding a GT350 front clip where we could confidently know that everything would work in the dash and the cluster climate controls um, is proving to be rather difficult because all the part outs that I can find, it seems like the first thing that they do is they cut out the engine as quickly as they can, cut up the harness, trash the shell because no one wants it. Um, and the idea kind of came about, maybe we could get a car that's the same color, like a front end collision Mustang GT, like 5.0, and transfer, you know, the GT350 special bits from this, you know, like keep the same seats, keep the same rear end, keep the fenders, keep the burnt hood. I don't know if you guys want to see the Barra Mustang or if you want to see a burnt car be brought back to life. I'm just concerned that it's going to be extremely difficult and a big headache trying to source all the little random stuff we need for this engine bay without either buying a full front clip and transferring everything over and having to repaint this or getting a car that's like together and then just kind of fixing that. So where, where are you guys at with that? I want to hear your, your opinions. For me, it wouldn't be the same if it's not this car, but I understand your, you know, why you're bringing it up. Yeah. Um, would it be easier? Yeah, a lot easier but it would be special to bring this car back. We all could say, we all driven this car, so we all know how special this car is. Because it's just, you know, it's, there's nothing crazy about it, but it's just, it's a good car, it's a great car, so. But we could take all the parts from this car and just pop it on another Mustang. That's what I'm curious about, if, the, if that's it's not a transferable. Mustang. Everything is. I mean, it's, it's like almost the same thing. We gotta see like, I don't know, it's probably additional bracing on this car, which might be able to bolt onto the other one and so on. But uh, the, the important thing, if you get a collision car or whatever, we're gonna make sure it's straight. At least this one is straight, which one other thing about getting a crash car concerned me is that, is that chassis not being completely straight. So. From what I understand, the biggest difference with the GT350, obviously the drivetrain, the suspension slightly different, um, and in the later years they came out with a performance pack for the GT, which almost made it very similar to the GT350 in terms of suspension. It had the same big Brembos, but uh, I still think the allure of the GT350 was the different gearbox, was the engine, which we were both removing, and then the aesthetics, like the different hood, bumpers, uh, trunk, fenders, which we could just take off this car, and the interior. Yeah. So I think in terms of chassis, it's not really that much different. It would literally just be if we're trying to preserve and like really, you know, rep the fact that this car was the car that caught on fire. Um, I mean, even if we, so if we don't use this car for this specific swap, it, I know it's going to be used for something else. So it's not like we're not going to ever see it again. I, I think. I don't yeah. know if you have other plans for it if we don't use it for this swap. 
we don't I mean. We don't have any real drivetrains laying around that we could just toss in it. The only thing that I feel like this would be good for would be like a drift car where, you know, we have a plug and play like standalone with no sort of integration, just ignition and go drive. Yeah. Especially because here's, here's another big thing. I haven't told you this, guys this, I don't know how you're gonna feel about it. A cool transmission that we can do, that I'm planning to do, is a 6R80. So it's an automatic transmission that came in some Mustangs, but I'm actually gonna get one from an F-150 where it's a six speed, um, you paddle shifted, trans brake capable, standalone controlled automatic transmission that can hold about like 850 wheel reliably or built can handle about 1500 because putting down 1200 horsepower on a stick shift car is gonna be very difficult. Um, and I think it'd be fun to kind of do something a little different. So what I failed to mention was that car that I showed you already had the automatic transmission all the sort of stock ECU controls, drive shaft, everything all bolted up to where all we would need to do is adapt it to this engine versus taking a manual car and making it auto. Yeah. So is that a V6 or a V8 car? V8. V8. The one that I was looking at. I mean, you could take the V8 engine and put it on this and turn it into a strip down drift car. I mean, that is another option. I know, I know a guy. A purpose for both things. Yeah, because we could just take that ECU, but again, no chassis harness. But I guess that'd be easy enough to just... Yeah, it's like switch wires, simplify it, got it, send it. I mean, that you is... You don't even have it burnt beam drift car. But I don't need another drift car, that's the problem. <laughs> you can never say that. You have like 20 of it it it, Okay, so it would be really interesting. I know Vaughn uh, is able to make Mustangs like pretty light and everything, but I'm curious, like if we stripped out a new Mustang, like what we could get it down to. Like full on ignorance, cut out what stuff. Wait at? Probably like 4,000 or something absurd. Wow. Yeah. Where are their cars at? Like 27, 28,000? No, I think those, they're still like 3,200 or something. The thing is like all the room that these cars have. They have like, a lot of once you take the dash out and everything, it's like you have like all the room ever. It feels really good. That, that idea of turning this into a drift car with a GT would be kind of cool. Yeah, and it should like fit. But then, I, then, I, then I'm stuck with another car, bro. Yeah. What do I need a Mustang drift car for? But then we gotta get, but then we still have to get all the parts of this thing's missing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we still have to figure out a radiator, still have to figure out, I guess we don't have to figure out a condenser, you gotta figure out all the pedal assembly crap. Could, uh, well, if you have this one like burnt up, you can just uh, break boost to delete the whole thing. We know? still need to worry about all controlling the power steering unless we do a manual rack. Just do a manual rack. Hmm. That's an idea for sure. Hmm. Thinking. <laughs> <laughs> I would not want to give away a burnt car. Oh, we got a poor person. All right, we about to see what's underneath the oil pan. I wonder what's here. I'm so curious about seeing what's underneath that. The, that is kind of weird. The boat shape thing. Ooh. Oh my God, it's heavy. Well, that is a weird design, huh? So it does have, it's just like a spacing for that. I weird. It's a big software in front of that. Dang, that is wild. Yeah. You don't want to damage that. No. Johan, what do you think? I know you used to work at a uh, JDM importing place. Oh, this looks good. It's not JDM, but it's uh, JDM quality. <laughs> well, the JDM stuff has a different smell. Yeah, oh this God, has like yes. an American smell. So mm. yeah. It kind of smells like Vegemite. It kind of smells like Vegemite. Like what? Vegemite? Doesn't it? Mm. Is it the feel or the fact that it's any? I don't know. My two they smell similar to this as well. Hmm. Yeah, that, the turbo motors have a different smell. That's what happens when you're cool and you have women around you. Yeah, that's yeah. this, uh... <laughs> <laughs> uh, it does smell as, uh, N.A. Hmm. Before we start pulling apart the Barra, because we do have the tools that we need to pull the pulleys off now, I'm gonna do a little test spot in the bay with some aircraft paint remover and see how easy this paint comes up so I know what I'm getting into if I do wanna go ahead and try to prep this all for paint. I've used this stuff before when stripping some Style 5s that I built for my E46. So what I'm gonna do is spray one little section here, let it sit for 45 minutes and see how well it works. Otherwise, I might have the option of getting some sort of portable media blaster or something to try to clean it up that way. Um, but this is not gonna be fun to try to dial in with a sander. It looks like it's doing something. 
Only about 20 minutes in and I can see it starting to lift the paint. It's working a lot better than I thought it would. That's impressive. Now this is sick. Just take the paint right off, right down to bare metal. That's awesome. Looks like I might need to do a little bit thicker coats in some places, but this is gonna make life so easy. Randy stopped by to ridicule my paint stripping work. So you yes. you you know how to fix burn cars? <laughs> yeah, we, we do this all the time. So what do you do? So uh, pretty much we'll just go ahead and water sand it, beat it with a first we'll beat it with a pressure washer, and we'll just kind of scuff through it and put 2K primer on it so it'll seal it. Sand a 2K primer, lay some base and clear. A little brand new. So I'm I'm making your life a lot harder by doing this. Yeah. All right, so I'm gonna stop. I'm just gonna drop the car off at your bay. Cool. And we'll pick it up. And I'm thinking like a pink engine bay. Sweet. You got any leftover paint? I sure do. No, 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 no. <laughs> none of that. None of that. <laughs> I'm pulling off the fenders right now to try to. I mean, what do you? How much do you want pulled off? If I'm gonna drop this thing off to you? Just the fenders, and that's it. All right. We'll put off the cradle and we'll fix, we'll paint the cradle back to black. You're probably, we'll pressure wash that off to see what we can reuse. I mean, that'd be sick. I'm game. Yeah. It, we'll definitely make it look pretty. I think the patina on the outside is really going to give us some taste. Yeah. And you were saying you might even be able to salvage the hood and make uh, it fit better? Straighten it to where it'll, it'll fit the seams a lot better. Sick. Be good. Well, that saves me time. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so while we disassemble this, I just want to let you guys know that uh, we are going to be going with some rather mild power goals for the build, but for what we're used to doing, this thing is going to make some power. Alberto, what numbers do you want to see out of this thing? Uh, a lot. All of it. So our goal, which is a modest goal for a bear, especially with the mods that we we're going to be doing, is to make four digit horsepower. Where do I think it's gonna land? Probably somewhere between 1,000 and 1,200 wheels. So we're gonna show you guys the process of disassembling this. Um, I'll kind of tell you some of the things we're gonna be upgrading, and then once we have parts and once we get it back from the machine shop, we can begin assembly. But these engines are super, super simple. Even with dual variable cams, still just looking at this thing, neither of us have seen one before, and it's very, very self-explanatory in regards to how everything works. I got a little bit alarmed at first when I saw that this thing had rocker arms, because you guys know SR20s plus rocker arms equals bad time. But these are similar to the ones that are on uh, like a 4G63, and they don't tend to fly off like SR20s do. Neither of us are super knowledgeable on the Vera, but I will say as we're kind of delving into it, we're getting a lot of knowledge from online, from other people. And what it seems like uh, is a fair assumption is if we wanted to make say 500, 600 with this engine, which originally was NA, I know it's a little bit weaker in the bottom end, but the two most important things that people do with these are valve springs and oil pump gears. So if we were doing just a very cheap and uh, quick rebuild, we would just do valve springs and oil pump gears. But like I said, we are going all out four digit horsepower or bust. Because this is a chassis that can handle big power, this is probably one of the few times that I'm like, all right, we can shoot for the moon and the car will be able to put the power down. One comfortable thing uh, right off the bat that we have noticed, there are marks for the proper timing of the engine. So disassembling this, we don't have to really worry too much because on the OEM chain, there are little yellow marks that we'll just be able to line right up. Now we are gonna be using a new OEM chain, um, but uh, just an interesting thing we are noticing as we go through this. I think it's really cool the design of the uh, actual cam caps are almost like a main girdle. It's kind of cool how they're all braced together. And I don't know that that's actually something that an engine would need for any sort of strength, but it just kind of looks cool. Another really cool thing, um, you guys know that we've had issues with woodruff keys before on different engines. Look at how massive this is. It's not like a tiny little one that can just break or slide off. That thing is huge. Slide off? Me and Alberto have both had our fun with broken woodruff keys. Ain't that right, Alberto? <laughs> Sore subject? Loose crank bolts. Ridiculously tight torrents crank bolts that need to go to like 400 pounds or 500 pounds something. Like, dude, I don't even have a tool that goes that. Are you talking about my RB or your BMW engine? Oh. Really, the BMW is the same way? Am I gonna break the woodruff keys in the rotary too? No. You're probably gonna have to grab the water pump for that, but it has oh. like a double gasket. Here. Why is it that every water pump looks fail like Alberto? You ever notice that? <laughs> but see, if I spin this, you see this like part, it has to like crush, mm -hmm. but there's a gasket between this part and this, and then another gasket between this and the, and the engine. So like, how do you replace that one gas? You almost have to replace the whole pump to get it to seal properly, right? I, I wouldn't know, Alberto. This is my first Barra. 
it, it is mine too, but yeah, I believe that wouldn't work unless you put a new one for some reason. Uh, it's always so nice when it just pops out. So I assume in this Alberto is what we would take apart when we go to replace those gears with billet ones. Mm -hmm. But I also got an aftermarket backing plate because um, I guess these are prone to failure as well. Kind of interesting. It is interesting. We should open it up. I'm game. Also, since this is another Australian engine, I guess the RB isn't, but I'm still going to go ahead and compare it to an RB. Check out the engagement that the oil pump gets on the crankshaft. If you guys remember, on some RBs, that point of engagement is really small and it's a very common mod to add an extended snout so it has better engagement. This one has a big chunk in there. Very cool Alberto trick. We need to take out Phillips bolts. Is that just to make sure that doesn't strip them? It's an impact Phillips screw bolt driver thing, whatever it's called, but yeah, it's used for this kind of bolts. You like hit it and it's like Oh, I, I didn't realize that. I thought you were just tapping it to like get it in deeper and then you're screwing with your hand. When you're hitting no, it, it's no, making no, it it's, turn? This is a spring-loaded turn thing, yeah. No way. Yeah, no, that's what it's for. That's, that's why sick. I it from it because the moment you touch it, you're gonna break this tip. <laughs> I had it for years. Now, why do you think, Alberto, that uh, everyone breaks these oil pump gears? What would your guess be without knowing the actual reason? Not sure. Well, for once, it's like it doesn't sit centered like some other pumps that I've seen. So, like for example, a JC has like a, a a front part that like centers onto the housing. Mm -hmm. This one's like free spinning, so it doesn't have that support. So you need like added strength material to maintain rigidity, especially revving that high. Alberto, what just happened off camera? What you got there in your hand? Dude, I don't know why you just scared the crap out of me. <laughs> like two children. I'm I'm running around with the leaf blower, he's running around Dude, with the torch. Like five times. Yeah, it did land on our arms. And now we have weapons, now it's gone. I'm gonna have this one. It's Maybe it's an Australian wasp that came in the barra. <laughs> one interesting thing you'll notice, Alberto's not just zapping those with an impact like I probably would. And you want to explain your reasoning why? This way I get to familiarize like with each bolt on the bolt on the motor. That way I know about how tight it should be. And that way I familiarize myself with it and I know if something's right or wrong later. Getting seat time on engines. Now, upgraded cams isn't a very common thing to do on these engines. I'm guessing because they're both variable, it isn't really necessary. Um, people commonly make four digit horsepower with the stock cams. Really the stock cams? Yeah. Now also, as I've explained, please remember guys, this isn't us making a video instructing you guys how to disassemble a bear or telling you that we are the most knowledgeable people. I'm sure there's a million videos in Australia uh, explaining things with all of their knowledge that they've acquired over the years. This is two people that like to mess with JZs and RBs and SRs That's delving boring. into a new fancy, uh, I guess this would be, um, what's it called in video games? A new map? A new world? New territory? DLC package? Yeah, this is our DLC package, our Australia DLC package. We got the Barra, next up is an RB30. Very cool. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> well, the lifters and the rocker, and maybe that's why they don't fall off, Adam. Look, oh, oh. can't fall off. Why well, didn't Nissan think of that? It's like they're just dingling. You're telling me you're already taking the head off? Is that easy? Now, what was this big special socket that we didn't have? Well, I should uh, say you didn't have, but I had. E18. That was not that tight. That was going to be like super tight. No, that is one thing that's going to be getting replaced along with the head gasket. Whenever you're ready, Poppy. Uh, see if this thing will pry off or is it glued on? Oh. Oh, MRS, yes. <laughs> I yeah. thought it was like a like, paper thing. Nope, it's factory MLS. So one thing that you guys will notice, this is a four liter engine, but if you look at the block, it doesn't have the craziest stroke. It's all in the piston bore. So compared to most of our engines that are like 86 mil pistons, this is actually a 92 mil piston. So I mean, uh, you still gotta see that the, the half of the crankshaft is sticking out the bottom of the block. No, I know. 
<laughs> that doesn't have anything now. It's just like the shortest block ever. Uh, that's, that's probably why the pan's so deep. Yeah, and that's why it has to have the oil pickup tube under the crankshaft stuff, like outside of the oil pan, like a special provision just for that. Oh, that makes sense. All right, break it to me, doctor. How are we looking? That's that's gross. Yeah, and it looks like very like Ford naturally aspirated old engine specs. Is this what your uh, Explorer engine looked like when you took it apart? Oh my god. Look, it has a JCGE gas here, one layer of steel too. So the good news is, looks like the cylinder walls look good. I don't see any sort of detonation or any sort of damage. It's actually a good thing that this thing is NA because it's less likely to have any sort of damage like that. Do you went to Ace Hardware to get the crank bolt again? <laughs> He's making a joke because it looks like an Ace bolt. It does look like an Ace bolt. What is this? What is this for a crank bolt? We have to get an ARP replacement for this. Is that what I think it is? Let's just scan it and see what, what price is it. Price check up on the barra. Do you think my phone would scan it? That's right. That's kind of crazy. There's a barcode on the piston. What? <laughs> is it scanning for you, Alberto? No way. Will it pull up? <laughs> a gunman B2 spirit. A plane? <laughs> what if it uses the same pistons, Alberto? Wow. You know that piston costs $44.75 billion. Why do they have the barcode for that? I have no idea. Well, that's what the app showed. Look. Samin. Okay, I thought it was a water jacket, but it's clearly a head drain, like I was trying to explain to you, Alberto. Oh, yeah. Gosh. <laughs> it's like, why is there oil in my water jacket? It's like, that's a head drain. Hey, whatever, I'm trying to learn out here. Seems like it rotates pretty smooth, huh? Dude, it does. Look at this. What was that for? Two hundred pounds short. There goes my cylinder walls. So we can order the correct bearings. We need to check and see how the bearings look, to see if we're going to need oversized ones. And what is the uh, consensus, Alberto, based on that one bearing? Still looks okay. It's not bad. I think the coating might be a stern, maybe starting to wear off. I'll have to just completely clean the bearing and inspect. I'll take some photos too. Here's your kit, sir. Yeah, this one's definitely have quite a bit of wear on the bearings. Oof. Come on, start. Started. <laughs> <In> a big cam. <laughs> Let's take this heavy old crunch off. 